Okay, let's so going back to our lesson. Uh, yesterday, we na natapos natin yung um, module four, uh, which is the thesis statement. A thesis statement can be found in the introduction on the first paragraph. In the first paragraph of your uh, introduction. So usually, a thesis statement uh, it is debatable, arguable. Uh, so it is open for uh, disagreement. Okay, so you need to have your facts, your data, but uh, ipaglaban mo ang yung uh, saloobin or yung yung opinion. So for this uh, module five, I'm gonna discuss module five and six, uh, outlining reading text in various disciplines. Okay. So, writing any academic text or ad academic paper and output <coughs> requires a demanding effort. So, you need, um, what do you call this, uh, a lot of efforts. You have to give your full potential and um, effort uh, aside from reading a lot. So, hindi ka lang magbabasa ng maraming references or related literature and then summarizing them. Locating the thesis statement of each and restating them in other words. Meticulously planning is required so that we can come up with a well-organized paper. So, uh, meron ka ng thesis statement na, na, na summarize mo na siya. Meron ka ng, or marami ka ng related literature, nakapagbasa ka na ng maraming related literature. And then you already paraphrase them and restate them in your own words meticulously. So, next is planning and organizing. So, what is planning and organizing? Planning is like uh, it bridges the gap from where you are to where you want to go. So, for you to achieve your goal or ma ma marating mo yung gusto mong puntahan, you have to organize things. Tama? And then, just like uh, how a teacher drafts his her lesson plan to produce the best learning experience for his learners, an architect plots, designs, the blueprint to pr or prior to construction, prior to construction, and how a fashion designer intelligently and creatively doodles on his sketchpad, visualizing a new fashion statement, a writer needs to plan first how he or she is going to begin paano ka nga ba magsisimula develop and uh, develop and and his or essay so paano mo siya sisimulan paano mo siya tatapusin so uh, yung yung essay mo whatever the structures he she wishes to use next is after stating your thesis statement the next stage is involved in free writing process is to create an outline an outline before you write your first draft. An outline is a map. So what is a map? Parang ito yung guideline mo of your essay. It shows what information each section or paragraph will contain. Ano nga ba yung uh, laman, nilalaman ng bawat uh, paragraph or uh, bawat section ng essay mo. And in what order, in what old order, most outlines, uh, most outlines use numbers, uh, numbers or bullets, uh, bullet points to arrange your information to convey your, your points. So, meron kang sinusunod na step-by-step -step procedure or pagkakasunod-sunod ng mga information na gusto mong i-convey or ibigay or you want the reader to, to know on your essay or article and then an outline of an essay can be very helpful for two reasons for two reasons number one an outline will help you make your easy essay more organized okay so a careful plan will help your body paragraph stay focused stay focused on the ideas your thesis statement and an outline saves time for the writers so preparing an outline can take time but when you are finished you will be able to write the rough draft of your essay more quickly than if you did not have an outline so pag organize kasi ng ng mga 
uh, ideas. So you can focus na uh, on the on the first uh, paragraph. I'm gonna what do you call this? Uh, ito yung information na gusto kong mabasa ng mga mababasa ko. Ganon. So sa pagkakasunod-sunod from the most important information down or list to the list to the to the least uh, important. So ino organize mo yan ng mga information na gusto mong malaman ng mga mambabasa mo. And it saves a lot of time, of course. Kasi, alam mo na yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng essay mo. Alam mo na yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng uh, mga informations mo. Na mas mabuti yun kesa sa magkahalo-halo yung mga information mo. Possible na mag, uh, mag-combine-combine like that. So, uh, it's better for you to have an outline for you to save time. And then, here's an example of how a blank outline might look. So, first, we have the introduction. Next is uh, the paragraph. Uh, uh, lagyan mo siya ng supporting idea. And then, uh, next is supporting idea again. So, what is your topic sentence? Like that. Ano yung topic dun sa, dun sa first paragraph? Second is uh, body paragraph 2. Then, topic sentence. Then, supporting ideas. And then paragraph 3, uh, the topic sentence, and then supporting ideas again. And then you have to conclude. Of course, in every essay or in every uh, written article, you have to conclude. You have to, you have, to have your own conclusion. So, uh, conclusion based on your evidences, based on your facts. Okay? And then, next is modules 6 and 7. So, writing a reaction paper and, uh, and the, the critical approaches in writing a critic. So, we're done uh, with an outline. So, if you have any questions, uh, ple uh, please feel free to message me on our group chat para ma address ko yung questions nyo. Okay? So, next is modules 5 and 6, writing re reaction paper and critical approaches in writing a critic. Uh, critical approaches in writing a critic. Lesson objective, you have been asked to use appropriate language in presenting ideas and even how to raise legitimate but contrary views in an appropriate manner. So, sabi niya dito, uh, natutunan niyo kung paano uh, mag-contrary or parang lumaban in an appropriate manner. Of course, there are some people na or there are some writers na lumalaban sila ng walang proper manner like that so as a writer you have to educate yourself educate yourself because you also have the ethics in writing hindi yung basta basta ka na lang lalaban na pinaglalaban mo na wala ka namang pinaglalaban or hindi mo alam kung ano talaga yung pinaglalaban mo or sometimes you sometimes there are some writers or some journalists like that na mm, feeling nila, sila lang yung tama kasi meron silang facts, meron silang evidences. But, uh, for us, uh, for you to become a writer, you should be uh, open uh, for uh, disagreement like that. So, how you have to uh, know or listen to other points of view. Kasi your point of view might not the same with the point of view of the others, right? So, you have to have the manner, the right manner in writing uh, uh, an essay or an article. At this point, you're going to learn about the different critical approaches in writing a critic. In writing a critic, familiarity with these approaches will also enhance your skills in making or giving critic or the proper judgment. And then, what is a critic? Let's define a critic. A critic is a careful analysis of an argument to determine what is said or what has been said. So, a careful analysis. When you say analysis, guys, it is a different uh, sense of studying. Parang pag-aaralan mo siya ng mas malalim in a different sense. So, pinag-aaralan mo yung argument to determine, to det determine what is said and how well the points are made. What assumptions underlie the arguments? So, what issues uh, were overlooked? Ano yung mga issues na hindi nasabi or nakita nung writer na yon? And then, what are the implications? Ano yung pwedeng maging uh, possible na result dun sa uh, observation or dun sa uh, 
analysis na yun. So, next, uh, it is a systematic yet personal response and evaluation of what you have read. Okay? So, it is a systematic. So, meron siyang pagkakasunod-sunod. And then, yet personal response and evaluation what you have read. You have to evaluate at the end of what you have read. Next. It is therefore important that you understand what you critic and what approach approach will be necessary to come up with a better better review. So, sabi dito, importante na naiintindihan mo ano yung uh, what you critic about. Ano ba yung uh, kinikritik mo? Or what approach? Ano yung gagamitin mong approach for you or will be necessary to come up with a better review para mas mapaganda mo pa after you evaluated uh, such an uh, issue like that, you have to come up with a better review. Just like a research, kailangan um, uh, meron kang mas better na conclusion or uh, what do you call this? Uh, conclusion or suggestions, better suggestions for the next researcher. Okay? And then, for example, after watching a movie or reading a story, you would be saying a lot of things about it. You will express your thoughts and personal opinions, whether they uh, they are negative or positive. You will also comment on the actors and actresses and the role they play. Doing so, it is important to understand the different approaches we can use to guide us in crediting a paper. paper. So what are the critical approaches in writing a, uh, a critic? Number one. Formalist criticism. A formalist criticism, it analyzes or analysis on the formal feature of the subject, not on the profile of the creator. Creator. It examines the form of work as a whole, sa kabuuan, the form of each individual part of the text, the individual scenes, uh, the individual scenes, the chapters, the characters, the settings, the tone of the voice, the point of view, the diction, and all other elements of the text which join to make it a single text. So, para siyang as a whole kung tinitingnan mo siya. After analyzing each part, the critic then describe how they work together to give meaning or theme to the text. So, uh, parang isa kang ibon, nakikita mo yung overall na, overall na nangyayari sa isang lugar. So, and then you can make your own uh, analysis or your own uh, evaluation. Next is biographical criticism. Biographical from the word itself, biogra. So, uh, from the root word biography. So, biography relates to the life of the creator to the subject. Okay? So, parang pinag-aaralan mo kung ano yung pinagmulan ng creator itself. It analyzes the, the writer's biography to show the relationship between the author's life and their works. So, meron bang uh, relationship yes, si author dun sa kanyang uh, sinulat uh, na literature, works of art or literature uh, like that. So, pinag-aaralan mo yung pinagmulan ni, ni writer. The goal, the goal of biographical criticism is understanding why the author wrote what he or she wrote. Kung ano yung sinulat niya, bakit niya sinulat, like that. So, meron ba siyang personal experience about this, like that. So, example ng, uh, ng biographical criticism na ganito, like for example, yung sudyante ko, uh, she did a research based on her own life. Kasi nga, she was raised uh, by a single mom. So, yeah, so, sa research niya, ginawa niya yung the life of uh, a student raised by a single mom. It's like how it affects uh, her as a person and her uh, academic performance. So, see, there is a relationship between your written text, kung ano yung mga sinulit mo, dun sa buhay mo as a writer. Next is historical, uh, from the word itself, history. So, galing ito, or ana it is an analysis of social, cultural, and inte intellectual uh, and context surrounding the text. So, socially, culturally, yung mga bawa yung mga aeta, like that, or some igorots, like that, surrounding the text. This is a criticism, the light of historical evidences, based on the context of which work was written. Yung lugar. Kung, ka, kung dun sa biographical, pinag-aaralan yung writer, dito naman, pinag-aaralan yung lugar. Socially, 
kung sino yung mga nakakahalubilo mo culturally, what kind of culture do you have so pag-aaralan yung lugar mismo kung saan nagawa yung written text including facts about the author's life o kasama din dito yung biographical and also the historical and the social circumstances of that time so ano yung mga problema na nakapaloob dun sa uh, lugar kung saan nakatira yung mga tao or yung writer itself next is gender criticism so gender criticism from the word self gender so it examines how sexually ident sexual identity influences the creation and reception of the subject it examines how sexual identity influences the creation inter interpretation and evaluation of a literary works so paano nga ba na na influence na influence ng gender orientation uh, ng uh, isang writer ang kanyang uh, literary text because uh, literature is timeless gender criticism is greatly influenced by the way society views gender differences therefore it examines how an author may have influenced gender perception through a work of literature next psychological criticism psychological psychology guys is the study of of the mind so pinag-aaralan mo yung utak ng tao paano siya mag-isip bakit siya ganito mag-isip like that so pinag-aaralan mo yon also known as the psychoanalytical uh, psychoanalytical criticism is the analysis of authors unintended message so there are sometimes that there is an article or essay that has been written pero um uh, what do you call this uh, the writer uh, was able to write something that hindi naman niya intended na sabihin. So, reading behind or reading uh, so reading between the lines, there is a, what do you call this? A hidden message or meron nakapaloob na message dun sa sinulat nung isang writer. So, the analysis focuses on the biographical circumstances of the author. So, biography, kung ano yung buhay, yung mga pinagdadaan ng problema ng isang author. So, the main goal is to analyze the, con the unconscious elements within a literary, literary text based on the background of the author. So, pinag-aaralan dito yung anong klaseng buhay yung author na naapektuhan niya yung kanyang literary works. Okay? Next is sociological criticism. Socio, from the word itself. So, okay, so sociological criticism, it studies the cultural, economic, and the political relationship between the subject and the author. Kung ano yung topic niya and the creator. So, how is the, uh, what do you call this, the culture or the economy or uh, yeah, economy or political uh, in the uh, yung, yung lugar, dun sa lugar ng creator. So, how it affects the the written text of that uh, writer or creator. Next is, module 7, writing a reaction paper, review or critic. Okay, let's skip this one. So, writing a reaction paper, review or critic paper, uh, writing a reaction, review, or critic paper requires rendering or giving a fair assessment or evaluation. So, kailangan patas ka sa pag-assess or pag-evaluate ng mga topic by giving your personal opinion. Personal opinion based on facts, okay? So, it's not just a personal opinion kasi it might lead to a disaster kung personal opinion lang yan. It should be based on facts. You should have evidences and must be supported by different sources. Hindi yung uh, kagaya nga ng pinag-aawayan nila ngayon sa what they call this, sa uh, internet BBM or Lenny Robredo tama? So, nag-aaway sila based on the different sources. Kasi uh, sa mga pro-BBM sinasabi nila kung uh, rappler na lang yung ang inyong sources, no way like that. So, you have to have different sources uh, to defend your claim based on facts, okay? So, you have to have cross-checking mag cross checking ka hindi lang sa isang website sa isang isang what they call this hindi lang GMA news uh, TV5 or ABS-CBN kailangan nagko cross checking ka kung tama yung sinasabi nila sa lahat ng website then it's true it's like the percentage is high na tama yung kinaklaim mo kasi yung mga evidences or mga sources mo 
they say the same about your uh, what do you call this dun sa pinaglalaban mo and then next is re uh, re reaction review and critic papers have the same goal to give the fair judgment or assessment okay so kailangan patas uh, assessment of a work of art event or a program sang pangyayari or sang programa to understand them them better let us differentiate the three terms okay so reaction paper is used in elementary level so reaction paper pala pang bata lang <laughs> just kidding so elementary level you will be asked to give your reaction on what you have heard ano yung narinig mo ano yung nakita mo and what ano yung mga na experience mo so this is a reaction paper and then a review paper is a term used or uh, used for the write-up of journalists or columnists. So this is higher level kind of paper and expressing their opinion and it balances opinions with facts. So always with facts, okay? And it is used by journalists and columnists. Next is a critic paper. Uh, usually, this is uh, the most academic in nature. And it is used by the senior high school students, college, and then the graduate schools in the master's degree. So from the senior high school, maga college kayo, and then magma master's de kayo, and then uh, the PhD or mag mag, mag the doctorate kayo. So it is the most cha challenging to write because you will not only write your personal opinions but will also need to integrate many facts. So hindi lang isang katotohanan, maraming katotohanan based from different sources supported by uh, different sources and then ways in writing or balance review critic paper the introduction the introduction uh, part of the paper you need to provide a background information about the topic you can include current problems or information that is accessible accessible to the readers so ano yung mga current or kasalukuyang problema ang kinakaharap ng lugar na ito or information na ano like for example sa introduction uh, kagaya na lagi kong sinasabi an introduction should consist like what is the problem uh, why is it a problem where is it a problem where is the problem located like that so how can you possibly um, solve this problem so that's how you make an introduction and in the body you will give an overview of the central features of the topic by providing a brief summary a brief summary or specific descriptions on the event book concept or object being critic aside from giving an overview it is essential to provide informed insights informed insights on those features writing on observable and comparable strength and weaknesses of the topic to another topic so possible pala na sa so writing and uh, writing a critic in the body uh, ano yung mga observation mo at uh, paano siya or if you will compare this uh, topic to another topic ano yung mga strength and weaknesses niya ano yung mga kalakasan niya at kahinaan niya Ganon. And then, uh, you have to give an overview like a boan, just like an, uh, a bird that can see uh, an overview of the place. So, kailangan, you have to give the evaluation na fair dun sa, uh, dun, fair and uh, justifiable or meron kang, what they call this, or patas. Okay. Next is, in the conclusion, or the final section of the paper, you should summarize the strengths and the weaknesses of the subject. So, dito daw, kailangan mo you summarize kung ano yung kalakasan, the strength, and the weaknesses of the subject or the topic. And then, it should stand out the recommendation in the recommendation to strengthen your claims. And negative appraisal, negative appraisal to express with attack. Okay? So, sa conclusion, kailangan mong ipakita yung mga lakasan at kahinaan ng, yung, uh, ng, ng topic itself, the subject itself. And then, you have to make your own recommendation how to strengthen your claim. So, para mas ma, what do you call this, ma, palakas mo ang yung claim na tama ka. So, negative appraisal expresses with tax. Uh, what do you call this? Attack. Uh, T A C T means like uh, nagbibigay ka ng isang uh, negative uh, thought or negative appraisal. Parang meron kang uh, negative opinion about these things. But professionally, you should attack professionally. Okay. So hindi yung uh, parang uh, ina underestimate mo na yung 
uh, topic itself or the subject itself na inaatake mo siya it's like giving offense like that you have to be keen uh, in giving offenses you have to have the skill in dealing with difficult situation with diplomacy okay so kailangan in a positive sense kahit na negative yung sinasabi mo you have to be very very care careful okay so remember the may pinag-aralan ka so pinag-aaralan mo kung paano siya gagawin or paano mo siya aatakihin okay do not just give uh, a negative appraisal uh, without kasi sa ano sa as a teacher you have to we use like for example the sandwich method so sa teacher uh, sinasabi na muna niya yung mga positive things and then the negative things of the student and then praise the student again or like in a positive manners or how can the student uh, improve the negative things that he or she has like that or kung ano yung mga negative works na nagawa niya so you have to be tactful okay so be very careful in giving negative comments or suggestions okay next oh, okay we're done with that so that's it guys for the week one or week three four uh, week four five six and seven okay so the final for this we will have our um, what do you call this summative test and then for your um, what do you call this uh, performance test I'm gonna give it to you in uh, writing or in our written paper uh, ibibigay ko na lang yung sila siya sa uh, pagdating ng distribution okay so if you have any questions please feel free to send me a message thank you